So, a lot of you have requested me to do a nails video, either a like, nail polish tutorial for how I do my nails, or a um, video about how I take care of my nails, something like that. Um, and so I figured I'd just do a video where I did both of those, I guess to an extent, just talked about my nails in general. And I was thinking about whether to, you know, do this as a more vlog style or a lesson type video, and I de decided that I wasn't really comfortable teaching a lesson on nail care. And while I can talk about how I personally take care of my nails, um, I don't really feel like I can teach this as a lesson because it's not really something that... I consider to be something that I know a lot about or I'm really good at. I just sort of, you know, buy nail polish and paint my nails as I feel comfortable and stuff like that. I don't, you know, go to nail salons. I don't know for sure what's healthy for your nails and what's not. And. I don't even consider myself to be someone who's particularly amazing at nail polish, so, I mean, this I did earlier, which I, um, let me focus there, um, I did do it with my non-dominant hand, so that's part of why it's so messy, um, because this is my right hand and I'm right-handed, but you can kind of tell certain spots where, you know, I kind of messed up or went too far outside the nail. So, again, I'm no expert. You can even see around here on the table where, um, there are, you know, streaks and stuff like that from when I've spilled a bit of nail polish and haven't quite been able to clean it up, so I'm clearly an amateur. But, anyway, since you guys were interested, I figured I would talk about this, um, firstly, regarding my nails and the length, because this is about as long as I've more or less always had my nails. Even when I was a kid, um, I never quite felt comfortable having super, super short nails, like a lot of people I know do, and I've never quite understood why. It's just something I've always liked. Even, you know, when I was young, I didn't really paint my nails all that often. It wasn't a thing I did, unless, you know, it was like a birthday party or, um, you know, a special occasion like a holiday. Or if there was a particularly big celebration, I would paint my nails, but that's pretty much it. We didn't have more than a couple of nail polishes around the house. And now I kind of have... I guess you'd call it a collection, and they're at varying degrees of, um, you know, some of them are like drugstore nail polish, and some of them are a little more high-end, which, um, you'll be able to see from the ones that I show you today, both a uh, few of the nail polishes that I'm going to show off, as well as the, um, as well as the ones that I'm going to be using. So, firstly, I'm going to show off a few basics, not really colors, but, um, firstly, to help with nail care, I use this, um, OPI Nail Strengthener. Um, it's, you can kind of see, it's kind of a clear polish that I will put on my nails, so like, this hand, you can tell, doesn't have any polish, but it's still shiny. That's because I always have this stuff on my nails. Or, well, not always, but, you know, if I decide to go a while without um, having polish on them, but I still want them to look nice, I apply this every once in a while. Um, there aren't really any instructions, so I don't necessarily know if it's something that you are 
that is intended to be on your nails at all times or only once in a while, but I try not to have it on all the time just because I feel like your nails do need to breathe, but it helps particularly since um, nail polish remover um, can kind of eat away at the nail, particularly if you have a really old or not very good quality remover. So I try and use this to make up for it. Um, and I try not to use nail polish remover. I kind of prefer to let it chip, which is why in a lot of my videos you can see my nail polish is chipping. Um, because that's, you know, my personal preference. Um, secondly, is this oxygen smoothing julep base coat. Now, julep is um, an online, sort of one of those subscription box sites that I tried out and um, basically I, well, I got a couple of their boxes before stopping the subscription, which was mostly just due to my own monetary reasons, but they have a lot of cool makeup products, and the reason why I actually wanted to try them out is, um, I'm not big into makeup, but the nail polishes are really nice and high quality. They have, you know, this really nice base coat, which I actually forgot to use, uh, when painting this hand, and because of that I will not be using it on this hand either. Um, I instead went with the nail strengthening coat as a base coat, but um, yeah, having some sort of base coat is really important. It kind of helps the nail polish, sorry, helps the nail polish grab onto your nails a little bit more. But because it's not grabbing on directly to your nails, it won't stain your nails or won't harm them. There's sort of a protecting layer in between, and I really like this because it helps, you know, like I said, helps your nails breathe a little bit more, and yeah, usually I use this particularly, um, because it's a sort of like, it's not quite white, it's a sort of creamy color, um, it's kind of hard to tell, but let me see if I can open it. It's a sort of creamy color, and because of that, it makes any sort of color stand out a lot more than if you, yeah, so see, sort of a creamy white, which um, I've seen pictures online and I've done it myself, but basically um, having a white or cream or any sort of actual colored base coat like this um, helps the color on your nails stand out a lot more. And also, I guess you, you can't really tell in the camera, but um, sometimes if your previous nail color still has bits, so like my previous, before this, my nails were blue, like a very dark blue, and the base coat, if there are still little bits of blue or a slight hint of blue, the base coat can help cover that up so it won't interfere with whatever your new nail polish color is. If you end up in a position where you're applying new polish right after removing the old polish. So it has that advantage as well, which if you used a clear coat, it wouldn't be the same. Now as far as top coat is concerned, this is just one that I got in like a French manicure kit, and I'm not really big into French manicures, but it's it's just called Miss Manicure, which is the name of the kit, so it's not really a nail polish, um, I guess not really a company known for its nail polish, so the two that I mentioned for the nail strengthener and base coat are OPI and Julep, both of which are well-known nail polish companies. And that, I think, is important because that's what's closest to your nail, so you want to make sure that that is high quality. So this, the top coat, is goes on top of the color to sort of seal it in. 
and, you know, further protect it. And because that's furthest away from your nail, I don't mind using something that isn't as high quality. Um, especially considering that, you know, higher quality stuff can get expensive. But, um, yeah, that's just what I personally use. And if I was in a position where I could get nicer stuff, I definitely would. Okay, now, before I move on to doing this on my other hand, I'm going to show you a few of my favorites. So, I mentioned Julep, and two of the other polishes that I received from Julep that I really like are this just called Phoebe. Another thing about Julep is um, they have different quote-unquote styles, or I don't remember what they called it, but it's basically they have a little profile that you fill out and it asks about your style and it sort of gives a label to it. Um, and so like this one, you can't really see at the bottom can you? But, um, this one is called Raiden. Yeah, there we go, Braden. And underneath it says It Girl, which is the sort of name of the style of the polish. Um, this is the stardust finish, so the sort of silvery, whereas this one, Phoebe, is Boho Glam which is the sort of name of that style. So, um, it's a little bit easier to tell what the style is about if you go on the website, um, but they, as part of the subscription box, they will send you nail polish that fits your style, and you can mix and match, and, you know, if there's one that fits your style but you didn't really like, you can, um, choose not to get that one and choose to get something else that's in a different style or, you know, whatever it is that you feel like. So it's fully customizable. Or, you know, if they give you a um, product, a makeup product that is something you already have or don't want, then you can uh, customize that. And I believe you get, um, there are different types of packages, but the ones that I got had three, um, nail polish colors in each box, and the fourth one was a randomized product. So I believe the first time I got a lip color, and the second time I got the Oxygen Smoothing Base Coat. But um, this is one of the colors that I got that I really like. That reminds me, uh, I did at one point, I want to say last spring, I did Scarab Nails, and that's because I received this and I immediately thought of scarabs and decided that I wanted to do scarab nails. So, and then my last uh, one I had the blue nails on the tips. If you look carefully, you can see this. And I've never really been huge into super glittery nails, but after I tried that, I'm definitely going to have to try it again. So, a couple of other colors that I've picked up. And these are not as high quality. So this is kind of an old one. Uh, but it's Revlon Very Current. It's just, I, I just really like the sort of dark reddish. And I mean, it's a very different red from the one that I have on here. This is very wine-ish. And this is more what I would wear, um, I guess, to a family gathering where I felt like I would need to be a little bit more grown up, I guess, in my choice of nail color. Um, this is, I believe, was one of my mom's that I kind of took from her, and she still uses it from time to time, but yeah, that sort of color. And this is one that I've used quite a bit, actually. Uh, it's, let me see if there's a name to the color. This Deeper Dive. And it's from the Wet n Wild Spoiled 
line, which I really like this. I mean, blues and greens are my favorite colors, so I, any sort of thing between blue and green I love. The julep color, like the scarab type one, is another example of that. But And then I guess this one is another example of a sort of blue-green, but it's Sally Hansen Triple Shine Dive In. This one's a lot less, you know, in between in the sort of, and I know there are better words for this, but less sparkly or, um, I guess hologrammy? I don't know what the word for that is, but it's more of a, you know, flat mix between the blue and the green, which I also very much like. So, for these nails, what I did today, I used this, which was one that came in a box, which I never thought I would actually use. I wasn't sure how it would look on my skin tone, I guess, but I don't know. You can tell me what you think, if you think the orange works for me or not. But this is Saya, and the, I guess, line is Bombshell. And so I'm using that for the thumb, and then Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, let's see, what's it called? Uh -huh. Red Carpet Red for these nails, and I kind of tried to use it for the apples too. And I got one of these nail pens. I was going to try and use this for the apples, but I wanted the same colors as the nails themselves. But this has a... it's double-sided, and it has this little nail pen that I used for the stems of the apples. And another thing I like about this is, even though I haven't used this as much, but you can flip it and also use this end as a brush. So, it's good for that sort of stuff. Again, it's kind of one of those, like, drugstore nail polish, you know, as seen on TV type products. So, not the highest quality. Um, but, you know, here we have three different levels of quality. The higher quality, the, you know, alright, you know, this is still kind of, you know, drugstore nail polish, but it's not that bad. And then the, as seen on TV. But anyway, let's try this out um, and see how me painting my nails on camera works or uh, doesn't work, as the case may be. Okay, so I'm going to start with the thumb, because in this design, the thumb is the only one that has anything on top of it. This color has caused me a lot of problems because it's far thicker, which is another thing about higher quality nail polishes. They are thicker. And you also have to try very hard not to get it everywhere, which I am not good at. I think you can already tell that I'm far better. Sorry about that. I ran out of battery. Anyway, I've just finished the thumb. I am going to move on to the other fingers. This way I can sort of let the thumb dry uh, before I move on to attempting the apples, which are kind of the hardest part. I um, 
actually tried doing the apples with a q-tip. So you can kind of see here, which didn't quite work. It ended up looking very blotchy. Um, yes, luckily, the good thing about these nails is they're a little bit easier to do than the thumb, where you kind of have to rotate, and also because they are solid color. That helps a lot. You can kind of also tell that um, the camera might be hard to pick up, but this nail polish is a lot thinner than um, the Julep nail polish, which is partially linked to quality as well, but there are definitely cases of nail polish that I have, you know, just picked up from drugstore or whatever, where I've had to put on multiple coats. And once again, it, at the very least, I know that once it dries and all the nail polish is removed from the edges, it will look nice. And honestly, I have a lot of friends who have told me techniques for making it so the polish doesn't get stuck anywhere but the nail. So I've been told, you know, put like Vaseline or beeswax around the edges here, uh, just anywhere that you don't want it to stick and then it'll come off easily, but that seems like a lot of trouble to me. And it's not like it doesn't, you know, come off next time you take a shower. It might take a little bit more soap than usual, but it's not that difficult. I really like this shade because it's a it's that sort of dark red but it's still kind of glittery. It reminds me of Jessica Rabbit's dress, actually. That sort of dark, kind of, um, kind of sexy red, but still glamorous, still glitzy a little bit. And I know that doesn't exactly work with apples or, you know, fall or anything like that. I think it's really pretty, and because it's my favorite red that I own, I couldn't resist using it even if it didn't quite fit. Uh oh, yeah, this one got a little messy. Sometimes you, you know, when you end up uh, getting a droplet of it on a nail that is rather small. Particularly when you're on your pinky, your pinkies are tiny and sometimes you'll end up with a giant droplet and it's like, okay, that is way more nail polish than this nail needs. I hope this isn't too boring for some of you. I've noticed um, in my analytics I have more male than female viewers, which I don't quite know why. I would think that, given that I read literature and poetry, it would be fairly split, but I don't know. So there's the nice reds, the glittery, you can kind of see the glitter a little bit better now that I've made it more close up, but yeah, there we go. Okay, on to the hard part, where I try to make apples appear 
on my thumb. Uh, this part took some testing, but basically I figured out if, at least for me, if you uh, wipe off, just basically focus on wiping off a lot of the excess on the brush so that there's still paint on it, but barely. And then you sort of dab until you get the right sort of shape. And luckily apples are a little bit... Like, they're not perfect circles. They're not supposed to be perfect circles. Which is part of what made that a little bit different, is... If it looked like a perfect circle, it wouldn't really look like an apple, you know? They've got that divot in the middle. But anyway, let's see how this works. Trying the first one. That actually is not that bad. There's a little gap in the middle where I could possibly put the stem, but yeah, that works. Okay, now back. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I know this is sort of meant to be more a show off -y video than a sounds video, but that sound is pretty interesting. Okay, now back to apples. Okay, let's try apple number two. Uh oh. See there, I noticed a drop that was falling, and that would not have been good. That would have ruined our apples. And you know what they say about one bad apple. It spoils the whole barrel. Okay. That is quite a larger apple than the previous apple. But I think it was still a bit drippy. That is okay. Let me just touch up this apple a little bit. Alright, and then go to top apple. There we go. Now it is dry enough. Hello. I suppose that is pretty good. They don't really become apples until you add the stems. Before then, they're sort of just red blotches or drops. So, that is what our apples look like at the moment. Hopefully, I can... Oops. Stem it properly. So that... Oops. <laughs> it will actually look like an apple. Alright, let's try this. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing properly. So here, you, it's a little squeeze tube, a tiny little thing at the end, and you just there we go. There's our three little apples. The idea for this actually was sort of inspired by, uh, I kind of wanted to do a My Little Pony nail polish thing, because my cousins really like the show, and hell, it's, it's kind of cute, and I like the little designs and stuff like that. 
and I really wanted to do the, I guess these, these are called cutie marks, the little marks that each pony has. I really wanted to do either Pinkie Pie or Rainbow Dash, since those are a couple of, you know, my little cousin's favorite colors. But I do not have yellow nail polish. And um, Pinkie Pie is a little pink pony who has three little balloons. One of the balloons is yellow. And Rainbow Dash has a little cloud and a little rainbow zigzag. Not quite rainbow, but like red, yellow, and I think green or blue or something. I think green. And again, don't have yellow. So I was trying to think of which ones I could do. And I was also trying to think of ideas of designs that were appropriate for, you know, fall and and I realized that Apple Applejack is pretty much perfect. Although this is more Applejack inspired than just straight up Applejack because um Applejack is firstly she's not even any of these shades. She's a very orange orange and then her mane is yellow with the apples, but again, I don't have yellow, so I kind of skipped on the yellow and went for a orange and red kind of look. So, yeah, that's it. Tell me what you guys think. Um, once again, I'm not like an expert or anything, I just kind of pick up nail polishes and do my thing. So, that's it. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Uh, yeah.